All right. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in here. And I uh, thank Coach Banster for having me on. I'm going to be talking using the double wing offense to punt. Okay. My, my name is Luke Cater. I'm the head football coach at Circleville High School. I have my Gmail address on there. You can feel free to reach out to me if you want to talk. Double wing offense to punt. Double wing offense. Anything that's double wing. We were, we've ran under center. We've ran shotgun. We flip-flop our line. We do all kinds of crazy stuff with the double wing. So please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. We're going to talk some wing-based football. I enjoy that. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Catris Luke. All right. So the first thing is, here's our double wing. This is what it looks like. We are the prototypical off-the-ball, foot-to-foot double wing with the sniffing fullback. To me, those are the number one characteristics you're going to see. So we're not like a wing T guy with, with heavy splits up here and this kid of four yards. This kid's uptight. These kids are uptight. We are recessed off the ball. We have our inside foot back on the offensive line with our inside hand down. Now, from double wing to punt formation, okay? Why would we do this? Why would you leave your offensive line into punt? Well, we're going to talk about that because to me this presents some unique uh, – unique stresses to the defense and does some different things that you're going to have to account for special teams wise. And it gives us, to me, it gives us some advantages. Okay. So why use your double wing to punt? The number one thing I want to do is give credit where credit's due. I, I never had the idea for this much like every other football coach in the world, anything that's good that I've done, I've stolen from somewhere. And I stole this from Hugh Wyatt and if you do not have it, if you're a double wing guy and you want to learn a lot about the double wing in a relatively short amount of time and you want to have it, the playbook in your hand, order Dynamics of the Double Wing 3.0 playbook from Hugh White. It is really good. I've got a lot of great ideas from there that I implemented with my team this year that changed the way we did some things. The number one way thing it changed was how we punt, Okay. So first thing we're going to talk about is why number one, the number one reason for me to do this is when you put your punter at 10 yards, you're in a scrimmage kick formation. It guarantees you're going to get a different look from the defense and your a gaps. Why is that important? Well, now they can't cover up. If you're a 50 team, you can't play a 50. If you're a six, two team that's putting two kids in my a gaps. Well, now you can't do that. You cannot touch my long snapper. You're going to have to play a different front variation. We're a team that runs a lot of wedge. Now you can't play in the A gaps. We direct snap a lot to our B back and run wedge. You have to play it differently. You have to come up with something differently. Okay. We see teams that are one high teams now play two returners. Okay. So now your box is going to change in that fashion. So it's going to force you. I can force you to change your defense or your personnel and we're going to run our base offense, or we're going to punt. So to me, that was the number one reason why I wanted to do this and why it sold it to me, because to me, it became simple on our end, but it makes you do something different with your defense. And we all know how that is when you're talking about 15 to 18-year-olds doing something different. It's hard. Okay? We can run nearly all of our base offense Without changing anything we do up front, to me, that's the most important part. I don't want to ask my offensive lineman to do different things. I want them to do the same thing, and we might put a, a tiny bit of window dressing on the back end of it with our skill position kids, and you're going to see that in the upcoming slides up here. Okay, the next reason, I don't like to punt a lot. I know a lot of you guys don't either, but I spend a lot of time trying to figure out how, if we get put in a punt-type situation, how can we not punt? Okay. We carry a lot of fakes. We carry, I'm going to get ready to show you. I'm going to show you all of our fakes. I'm going to show you the film that I have them. We carry 10 fakes. And that's our base offense that we're running out of our punt formation. Okay. And to me, it's a lot of fun for our kids. Our kids, we get, you know, a lot of times it's depressing to get put in a punt situation, but a lot of times our kids are like, Hey, you know, let's, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do this. Run this fake coach. Okay. Well, it gets us a little bit excited. Okay. And the other thing I like is I can keep my same 11 on the field. All of a sudden, when we're running offense, punt becomes part of my offense. When I'm running team time, we're running punt during that time because it doesn't become, to me, it's no longer part of special teams. It's part of offense. We've segmented that. We've closed the gap on what I, on what I want to be part of special teams, and I've made it part of my offense. So it's less special teams to practice, more offense to practice. 
Okay. So things to know here, what's important? Timing's critically important. The snap has to be practiced daily. Why is that important? With our punter at 10 yards and the way we're going to block this, it's going to have to get, it's got to get, it's got to get there and it's got to get off. Okay. The snap count, our normal snap count is go, ready, hut. Okay. When we punt, our snap count's going to change because I don't want to tell my long snapper when to snap it. Our snap count becomes go, ready, hut. And then we stop and the long snapper is going to snap when he's ready. So everybody's got to be ready. We are in a dead, we're in a silent count. The other thing we do here is we're a one step directional punt with our punter. Okay. I make a call on the sidelines. Sometimes I yell it in. I'm a loud guy. I can be obnoxious. And, uh, and Nick, who's working this video, knows I'm not as obnoxious as my brother, but God bless him. I try to be. <laughs> so if we're on the hash, a lot of times we're going to punt into the boundary and we're going to want to put it somewhere in that number to sideline ratio. And um, or if you're going to put one returner out of there, we're going to punt it away from your one returner side. OK. All right. So we want a punter, hopefully a quarterback that can do several things, because we're going to ask that kid that punter is going to have to be able to run. The punter might be, have to be able to throw. He's going to have to do some different things. And we'll show you that with our fakes and uh, the film I have coming up. Okay, so offensive line-wise, our offensive line guys rules are going to be to block man on to outside gap. Why is that important? Because we have enough guys up front to protect. If they line somebody up in every gap, we can block every gap with our personal protector stepping in and taking one of the A gaps. We can block everybody out if you're going to run an eight-man front and play in all of our gaps. And we have the kids, they block for a two one uh, excuse me, a two 1,000 count and releasing the lanes that we have the kids fit in upside the field, okay? To me, it's another critically important point is getting the big guys to understand that two 1,000 means two 1,000. You release people early, you're going to really hurt us, okay? And we had zero punts blocked on the year, even, use, even using this, okay? Because a lot of people were so worried a lot of times about what we were going to do on the front end of this, Okay, so we have the wings contained and they have to understand they can't allow anybody outside them. If they do, it's really going to hurt us and this thing's going to come back on us. The B backs crouch like a shortstop. He's going to be in the B gap and he's ready for uh, any ground balls, you know, at about three to four yards back there. And he's going to release to where our directional call is. So if I call right or left, he's going to release right or left to be one of our safety valves or next guy out over there. Now, again, the punter's going to have to take one step, punt, and then he's going to work. Excuse me. He's going to try to kick that ball between the numbers and out of bounds. I like a lot of times if I'm punting, punt the darn thing out of bounds. Why? Because I got a lineman on the field, and it can't get returned. Zero net yards on the back end of that thing is great to me. Nothing, go, nothing can go awry. But – the next thing that can happen is if it shakes it, something happens. It can, we need to be able to relay that call to the guys, uh, guys running after it so they know we have another call. So his job is make the call if it gets shanked or anything like that, or if it goes away from where we want to punt it. If I call right and he punts that thing left, our unit needs to know now so we can readjust. He's then going to follow as a safety to make sure, hey, if the ball is coming back, we're following it to make sure it gets tackled. All right, so our offense in the double wings based on running power, counter, wedge, trap, sweep, those type of plays, and those are relayed on here. We run for our fake punts. We run wedge. We run counter. We run a counter keep variation, which comes off of our counter play. We run power sweep. We run power pass. We run a throwback off of our power pass. We run our G belly down play, whatever you guys call it, straight from the wing tee. We run waggle. We run a waggle throwback variation. And coming this year, we sat down and, and we sat down and looked at it. We're going to run a power shovel, and we're going to run a screen variation off of this. And again, this is nothing new to us. This is our offensive playbook that is run out of our punt formation. Okay. So the first one's pretty easy. Our wedge. Are, and again, you're going to have to tear, really going to have to work with this kid. What we ended up doing last year, the way this worked for us, our center came off the field, and our guy who was actually our starting quarterback went up in here, and he was our best long snapper. So our number two quarterback came on the field and was right here. So we had quarterback one, 
quarterback too. And that's the way it fit for us. A lot of times it's not going to work like that. I just thought, I always thought that was kind of funny. So our 300 pounder came off the field and the guy taking snaps is now giving snaps. So this kid has to be able to see, he hasn't been able to understand. So the way we would call this, I would call it punt 30 wedge. And so they know we're in punt formation, but we're running 30 wedge. So he knows he's going to have to snap the ball directly to the B back. And again, why is this great? Because we know being in a scrimmage kick formation, we've forced you out of your base defense. You cannot line up here. You can't line up here. Can't line up here. Why? Because you might touch my long snapper. And that's going to make me really angry on the sidelines because that's my number one quarterback. Okay. And again, I got a couple clips of this. Um, I don't believe we ever got stopped running this. I think we ran it two or three times. We converted every time we ran a wedge out of this. Uh, one of my favorite plays on this is counter. This is again, a direct snap to the B back and the B back is going to catch the snap and he's going to hand the ball off inside to the C back immediately. Okay. And we're going to pull the guard and tackle and we're going to shoe shine with that tight end. And again, I have another clip of this online. We ran it on a fourth and 12 and got about 10 yards. It was in the middle of the field. So I was going to take a gamble. I let the kids pick and they said, we were going to run the counter, ran it well, just didn't get it, but it got us 10 yards. Now, next thing off of here, and I'm going to show you why we installed counter keep. A counter keep is counter, but you're going to see the reaction of the defense when we run counter. Everybody over here is running full flow over here. And now... I teach this kid, I'm like, hey, you need to look at the edge. And I said, if this edge is clean, put the ball here, pull it, and run. And you're going to see that on the film we have. So that's counter keep. Zero new teaching, but it's this kid understanding that, hey, if our edge is clean, there's nothing out here, keep it. Because our best option might be to fake it out here. And again, power sweep for us is uh, just us running our normal Trojan sweep play, where we're down, down, down pull the guards we're leading on the edge here with a kick out and this kid takes his one step right direction fakes the kick and he's going we ran this we ran this once this year and converted on it when we ran this to me it's a lot like some of the rugby style things that teams do where the kids kids faking the faking the taking the kick and going and that's all we're doing right here and the other thing that we have built in here at the end of the year that we did was instead of doing what we would normally do here on the backside, we're running this kid on a seven to 10 yard drag across the field. And we're running this kid on a deep post. Why are we doing that? If this kid gets in trouble, I want him to know that there's an outlet for him over here. Okay. If I have my, if I have my kid running up here across the field and I know, Hey, we got people coming up field, make him call it, make him call it. Okay. I'm going to be there on the referee, making sure he understands that, hey, my kid wasn't downfield, even if he was 10 yards downfield. But the things we got to do, okay? Next thing we have on here is power pass, what we call brown in here that we got from Wyatt. So this kid's running at a 45 degrees, five steps, then banking it right out. This kid's running nearly vertically, then banking it out at five steps, and we're still on the edge with our fullback. And again, fake our one-step directional, roll out here. I have a clip of this to show you that we ran it that was pretty successful. And again, power pass throwback is, again, from our regular playbook. These guys are still going out. This guy's still sealing the edge, but we're running a vertical, and we're running an outside release wheel route that we call it out here. So he's going to take his one, two, three, turn and throw to the throwback routes. Our base G play, we're going to direct snap it to the B back, and we are down, down, first linebacker inside, kick, and go. We're running G play that he normally knows how to run. And what we do is, and I'm sorry I didn't cover it earlier, but if we're snapping it directly to our B back, our, our punter in the back there, what I have him do is jump and act like the ball was snapped over his head. And he's going to start yelling fire. He's going to start scrambling. He's going to start running back there, diving on the ground. I tell him, I said, man, you got to be crazy because I want the edge people pulled up the field. Because if we're running counter, I want that kid kicked. If we're running G, I want to be underneath him now. I want people that I don't have to account for, okay? If there's a man that's man on here on my C-back, I want him running up the field trying to find the football because that C-back's trying to block somebody else if they're in some type of man protection scheme on punt return, okay? All right. Um, another base play we have here is Waggle. I'm going to show you how we ran a waggle this year. We completed it. We completed it here to the corner route. 
when we ran it and we're going to, we changed how we ran it at the end of the season. So instead we used to take this kid and try to get him out in the flats. And we stopped doing that. I'm like, I want you to be a blocker, get out here and be a blocker. So we're going to pull three to try to block your edge. We're going to run our corner. We're going to run our normal drag. We're going to run this kid. But one of the hard realities is if you're a two returner team, you're probably going to cover this kid and this kid. We need options underneath or we need options to be able to run. To me, if we're pulling three kids over here, we have a run option. And then what else we're doing right here is trying to pin down, pivot, and release by our A back in here so we retain a flat route. So to me, this becomes a run to flat. What's open? Okay. And you're going to see our quarterback panics unloads this and we complete it and we get the first down, but it is not, it's not a thing of pretty. And the play that we called was actually supposed to be this play waggle throwback. So what do we do? And this is one of my favorite plays and you'll see why, because you'll see how wide open this kid is. And what we have our B back do is I tell him when the ball is snapped, fall down. And you'll see my kid goes down into like a frog type crouch position. I, I told him, man, you got to fall down, fall down because we want people to lose sight of you fall down, get back up. And all you're doing is releasing outside, outside the hash, get open, be open. They're not going to cover you. And we're running, we're running waggle over here. He's going to stop and we're going to throw back to you. And you're going to see, we didn't do it. Obviously we complete the pass to the X. We're going to see how incredibly wide open that kid is. And it's going to be a good play for us. The next thing that we're looking at putting in this year is obviously we're a double wing team. So we run a ton of power. So what do we want to do? We want to, we sat down and we looked at how can we run power out of this is we're going to snap directly to our quarterback back here. We're going to kick out and we're going to have this kid come underneath and we're, we're going to shovel it to him. And we're going to run a shovel type power play where I'm probably going to have the quarterback look over here and see how open it is. Okay, and that's it for that. And now I'm going to pull up some film and we're going to look at uh, some double wing fakes. Okay. All right. So first thing I want to point out here is what we uh, what we made a mention earlier was when we get into scrimmage kick formation, it makes you fundamentally change your defense. The team we're playing was a 50 team that played with a head up nose on us all night. And you're going to notice right here, they play in some type of kicked over five man front now with a stand up and four guys down. So they're kind of in they're they're in a different front than they are. And uh, we had trouble wedging these guys, but now all of a sudden they've opened the middle of the field up for us. We're in the middle, nearly the, near the middle of the field, and it's about a fourth and two. We're going to run wedge right here. And you're going to see right here, we get a fake from this kid. It's not great, but it was enough to pull this kid for a minute who's not going to chase in the backside. And you're going to see the catch right here, boom. And we're off and going. Converted it. All right, so here's our counterplay. And again, I'll point out a couple things here. You'll notice he's set a little bit deeper than I wanted him to set right here. And again, it is fourth and forever right here. And we're trying something because to me, we're on their side of the field. We're a wing base team. I'm not going to punt it right here. I want to try to, I don't care if it's fourth and 12, fourth and 13. We're on their side of the field. I want to try to convert it. So we're going to look at it. We're going to have some fun. We're going to run our counterplay and see what happens. And again, you're going to see right here, we run it just like regular counter. This kid needs to take a better, to me, a better counter jab right here and set up his blocks that we're pulling to, we're shoe shining, we're snapping to our B back. He's going to hand underneath to the C back. Everybody else over here should be blocking down. Okay. Now here's why we run counter keep now. Watch this and watch this. That's why we run counter keep. Hand it off. Everybody sees the motion. Even if he does have the ball, everybody sees us pulling the other way. And the way I plan to, to run this is I'm only going to tell this kid. I say, hey, we're going to run uh, hunt 45 counter. And I'll look at the fullback and tell him, hey, keep it. So you can see again, that's why we run it. 
Okay, this is a, again, a wedge fake. And you can see they can't cover the middle. They can't cover the middle of us. This team was a 3-3 stack team, I believe, when we played them. So you can see, obviously, this is not a 3-3 stack that they're playing against us. They're playing some type of, hey, we got to pin back. Let's go get them type front to me is, is what I see right here. Again, snap to the fullback. Boom, convert that thing. And what we got right here, here's our waggle play. And we run it a little bit different here when we ran waggle than what I showed you because of what we looked at when we ran this, okay? Now, what we what we have now when we want to run this is, I want this kid running the, the excuse me, he's running the corner, he's running the, hit pivot route he's running excuse me our backside tight end is running our uh our uh excuse me our route over here and then we should be getting a post route from our backside wing back and now what we have is we're going to pull both guards and we're going to pull our fullback normally on waggle but again i told you when we ran this now this should have been a waggle throwback this kid should go down and release over here and you're going to see this kid wide open or our number two quarterback gets the ball, doesn't look over there, and we complete the corner over here on it. We can see my A back, highly confused, tries to help out, doesn't block that kid when we need him to. We convert it anyway. But what you'll want to see here is this was the called throwback. We go down. The throwback is highly open. Again, fall down. I want this kid to clear. And again, not a very good job by us picking up their rush, but the kid was panicked, did his best job, completed it, completed his job, did it well. We convert that one. Did it good? That's all of them that I had on here for right now. I apologize. Some of our film wasn't very good this year, so I kind of pulled some of the clips that I wanted. But if you reach out, you want to talk about if you're a double wing guy, if you want to talk about how you use it, how you can use double wing to ponder, if you want to talk ponder, you want to talk double wing, anything, let me know and I'm open and free to talk with you. I appreciate your time. Thank you.